Big Country Politics on KTAB continues. All right, welcome back, and we are joined with Congressman Arrington. Thanks so much again for joining us here today. Um, you've been in Abilene. Uh, you, you know, I know you got to have breakfast with uh, Mayor Williams. You got to have lunch at, you know, Betty Rose's, supporting these local businesses. What are you hearing from Mayor Williams and all these folks? Well, first of all, I love being back in the big country, and it's good to see you and so many of my, my friends and colleagues. Um, uh, there's something about us. I think God wired us for, con for community, for connection. And there's something that we've lost in these weeks. Maybe we'll appreciate it a lot more, just those loving relationships and friendships. Uh, Mayor Williams would be in, on the top of my list of friends, and uh, we're partners, and we're working closely. He calls me, I call him. We make sure that we're working in concert. I think he's got the tougher job, quite frankly, because a lot of the decisions, in my opinion, ought to be made at the local level. We, we don't need a national one-size-fits-all a blanket approach. I think that was would be wrong-headed, and um, and and uh, we uh, talked about keeping uh, our eyes on the, the long term and not just in the immediate. Uh, he he reminded me that uh, you guys just secured 50 years of, uh, of water, water for yeah. the citizens here in the big country. That's huge. So there are many things to be juggling along with responding to COVID and recovering as a community. And uh, he's, he's trying to balance all that. And I think his input helps me do a better job uh, of being a voice for Abilene in the big country. And I think, uh, you know, having me here to say, look, what can I do? He mentioned uh, and, and was gracious to thank me for my help with Hendrick Hospital. Uh, they've needed some support for PPEs. I've been at meetings. I work with the governor's office, the national stockpile, and I'll work with uh, direct to supplier if I have to, and we've yeah. done that. And so. We're a team. We're a team. That's the bottom line. Yeah, there you are. You got to thank those healthcare workers and those healthcare workers, all those on the front line, they're doing a great job. Oh my gosh. Literally, they're putting their safety and the safety of their family uh, at risk so that we could manage this, that we could not be inundated, which we weren't, so that we could bend the curve, which we are, and so we could get back to living again, which we are and will be in greater capacity as as every day goes by so i thank the the uh, health care workers and uh, the, the the all the frontline folks in health care for keeping our families safe and protecting our communities you guys speaking of heroes those are the heroes very good all right let's switch gears just a little bit um abilene uh, has your heart and dias air force base has your heart as well um it's really, you know, exciting. Uh, the B-1s were launched on kind of an operational training mission. So yes. uh, several hundred of our DICE airmen got to go out there and fly the B-1s. And so the B-1s are out. Um, you see them right there. Uh, you, you know that sound and uh, oh. you can see see uh, that freedom in the sky, right? The sound of freedom. You know, there there is no freedom without security. And uh, we speak about people on the front lines, tip of the spear, risking their lives. This is what these guys do every day, every day. And they are engaged now. You know, we can't, again, we've got we to gotta manage our entire portfolio of, of things that are part of the people's business. And the top of that list is the defense of our nation. So uh, these folks are deploying for training exercises. You know, our C-130J uh, team, our airlift wing, is as important as our bomber wing. They're involved in humanitarian exercises to support uh, our allies around the world and to engage in pandemics like this that are global uh, disasters. Uh, but we also need that, B, we need that B-1 flying out there to project strength and deterrence so that our enemies are not thinking that uh, we're just so focused on COVID that we're not protecting our flank. And that sound of that uh, B-1 is maybe the sound of freedom to us, but it's, it's the sound of uh, don't mess with America um, uh, to our enemies who might be thinking, hmm, I wonder if this is a time of weakness. I wonder if we can take advantage of it. The answer is uh, I don't think so. And these guys are, are sending that message loud and clearly. So God bless our freedom fighters at Dias Air Force Base. Very good. And all right, uh, something exciting still to come on the horizon, something that you've really um, pushed, uh, pushed a lot. The B-21, how's that going? Well, there's nothing more important to Abilene than making sure that for the remainder of the 21st century, we're Look flying. Look how beautiful that thing is, yeah. Oh my gosh, listen. 
That's the greatest, most capable, most powerful bomber in the world when it comes online. We think it's going to be as soon as five years. That's going to be flying out of the big country. That's the future of DICE. So we're going to transition from B1 to B21. My job is to make sure that we keep our airmen safe, that we don't compromise the mission, and that we have that seamless transition for DICE and Abilene. And we're, we're absolutely engaged in that. In fact, that was one of the last meetings we had before COVID, before the Defense Authorization Committee. And, you know, we're digging in. And again, we're going to do what's right for our country, our airmen, and for Abilene. And we're in a good spot. Very good. All right, just about 30 seconds left. Uh, what's your message to people um, in your district right now? I'm proud of you. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud to be a West Texan. Um, you guys, I get emotional because, you know, the resilience, uh, the risk taking, uh, the love for the neighbor, the belief in God and family first as the strength of this nation is, is coming out in spades. And uh, that is the secret. Uh, that is the central characteristic of what made America great. And that is certainly what continues to keep West Texas great. And it's, and it's those values and attributes that uh, I'm asking my fellow West Texans to go into that well deeply and draw from that. Draw from our pioneer forefathers who had to face risk just like we are, and they leaned in, and they loved each other, and they helped each other. They worked together the whole way. We are Americans first, and we are West Texans, and we will lead the way. So keep up the great work. You make me proud, and you make my job uh, very easy uh, as a labor of love. So God bless, and go West Texas. All right, Congressman. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Oh, yeah, there hello. we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All Let's right. See, are we completely safe? Yeah, absolutely. We're Don't safe. Don't be breathing on me. We're safe. All right. Thank you, Congressman. We'll be back right here on Big Country Politics.